For viewers of this channel, it should be no surprise that neutron stars are absolutely terrifying objects, with extremely powerful magnetic fields and some seriously strange properties. But up until now, scientists have never had a chance to map a neutron star in detail, let alone a pulsar. But the one that NICER, or Neutron Star Interior Composition Explorer, has just produced is making them question the textbook definition of a pulsar's surface. Before we jump in, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. When much more massive stars than our own run out of fuel, the constant battle between the internal pressures coming from the core and the star's immense gravity finally ends in gravity winning, causing the star to collapse and explode as a supernova. These immense explosions sometimes leave behind a remnant in the form of a white dwarf or a neutron star. These objects are far smaller than the star that formed them, usually no bigger than 16 miles across if that. But they're super dense, containing far more mass than even our own star in that radius. There are several different types of neutron stars, each with their own unique set of properties. Magnetars feature far more powerful magnetic fields than your standard neutron star, and pulsars act similar to lighthouses. Lighthouses of doom, that is. Shining powerful beams that emit gamma and x-ray radiation into the depths of space, and as recurring viewers know, pulsars spin extremely fast, some of them spinning hundreds and hundreds of times per second. Over the course of the last several decades, we've been trying to figure out how these things really work. The simplest model suggests a magnetic field around a typical pulsar would be similar in shape to a bar magnet. The field would be so powerful that it would rip particles from the surface of the object and accelerate them. The magnetic field would then take those particles and slam them into the other side of the object heating up the surface and causing the magnetic poles to turn into literal hotspots. While pulsars are usually depicted as dark objects, they each have a faint glow thanks to the x-rays they emit, but the poles glow much, much brighter than the rest of the neutron star. The pulsar known as J0030 rotates at a mind-blowing rate of 205 times per second. NICER observed this pulsar from July of 2017 to December of 2018. During that time, two groups of scientists mapped J0030's surface, determining where its hotspots and poles were. Both teams used different methods for doing this, and their results were virtually identical. According to the results of these two teams, J0030 is somewhere between 1.3 to 1.4 times the mass of our Sun, and just 15.8 to 16.2 miles across or 25.4 to 26 kilometers. Thomas Riley, a doctoral student in computational astrophysics, said this in regards to the study. When we first started working on J0030, our understanding of how to simulate pulsars was incomplete, and it still is. But thanks to NICER's detailed data, open source tools, high performance computers, and great teamwork, we now have a framework for developing more realistic models of these objects. But mapping the magnetic field's poles yielded some strange results which are challenging the way we think about the surface of pulsars. Just like how black holes create gravitational lensing effects due to their immense gravity well, so too do neutron stars. And using that effect, NICER was able to image the far side of pulsar J0030. Einstein's general theory of relativity describes the fabric of the universe kind of like a trampoline. As objects are dropped on that trampoline, they stretch its surface, and the pulsar is so heavy that it creates these strange effects around the neutron star, causing even the light that it emits to be bent around it. NICER was able to detect the arrival of these X-rays from J0030 with an accuracy better than 100 nanoseconds, which is a precision that is 20 times greater than what previous technology offered. And it's this precision that allowed for NICER to take advantage of this gravitational lensing effect for the first time ever. Cole Miller, an astronomy professor at the University of Maryland who led the second team, says, NICER's unparalleled X-ray measurements allowed us to make the most precise and reliable calculations of a pulsar's size to date, with an uncertainty of less than 10%. The whole NICER team has made an important contribution to fundamental physics that is impossible to probe in terrestrial laboratories. 
From Earth, we're able to see the pulsar's northern hemisphere. And looking at it, the two teams expected to find one hotspot in the northern hemisphere. Based on the current model of how we think a pulsar should look. But they didn't see that at all. No, instead the researchers identified at least three hotspots and all of them were coming from the Southern Hemisphere. After running simulations using overlapping circles of different sizes and temperatures that would be the source of the X-ray signals that NICER picks up, one resolution of the simulation resulted in two hotspots, one small and circular and the other longer and in the shape of a crescent moon, which is very different from what our typical view of a pulsar should be. Others concluded with ovals of different temperatures and sizes in two different configurations. One featured two ovals that closely matched the pattern found by Riley's team. And the other added a third, cooler spot that was slightly askew from the south rotational pole of the pulsar. Prior to NICER and the predictions offered by these two teams, it was thought that hotspot locations and shapes could vary. But with J0030, it seems that its spots are arranged in some truly strange ways. And thanks to this information, we now know that their magnetic fields are far more complicated than a traditional dipole field. This really makes me wonder what other surprises we might find in the future. Yes, thank you computer, this is speculation. That we might find in the future by using gravitational lensing to image the surface of other extreme objects like magnetars and even, potentially, the objects we currently think to be ZTOs, or thorn Zhiktov objects. Being able to image a star's surface using its own gravitational lensing is pretty awesome, and it shows that we're truly moving into a new era of observation. NICER isn't the only telescope that will be able to use gravitational lensing to peer where no one has peered before. Ha! Nailed it. Both the proposed outgoing Cyclopean Astronomical Lens, or FOCAL for short, and a name that is oddly Lovecraftian, and the James Webb Space Telescope will use the Sun as a gravitational lens. This would allow us to view exoplanets and other objects in unprecedented detail. But even without using the sun as a lens, Focal would be able to perform some pretty impressive feats that would otherwise be impossible before its hypothetical launch. For one, it would be able to measure the precise position of every star in the galaxy, calculate stellar distances by parallax, and it would also be able to study the interstellar medium, the heliosphere, and observe gravitational waves. Perhaps once these telescopes launch, we'll get an even better image of these extreme neutron stars. And who knows what strange things we'll find. All they have to do is launch the James Webb Telescope and build Focal, since right now it's nothing more than a proposal, but one that will not require non-existent tech to build. But going back to NICER and this new image of a pulsar real fast. Zavian Arzamanian, NICER science lead at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, concludes by saying, it's remarkable and also very reassuring that the two teams achieved such similar sizes, masses, and hotspot patterns for J0030 using different modeling approaches. It tells us NICER is on the right path to help us answer an enduring question in astrophysics. What form does matter take in the ultra-dense cores of neutron stars? Hopefully soon we'll be able to answer that question in the future. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment down below. How cool is this image? Like, really, that light source looks like a crescent moon. And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of the show, and check out the Patreon while you're at it. Couldn't hurt, right? And speaking of which, look at all those names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.